This video is going to be a cookser carving, start to finish. Now normally I would use um, freshly cut wood, you know, green wood as they call it, and I'd do them in batches of a 20 or whatever and I'd start drying them, but that's not really gonna work for um, a video. I would also normally do them over there on my vice, but that's on a bench close to a window, so not gonna work well for uh, the video either. These three lovely pieces of wood, spalted beech, and I think these two are spalted birch. A spare vice here. Now I'm gonna fix this to that block. So I'll start chopping them down, getting them to the right size. Now that one fits already. I'll have to get these two down to fit. So we'll start chopping on these and get them to the right size, and then we'll get on with cupping. And you can do it all sorts of different ways. You can use a lathe, you can use dremels and all sorts of things like that. A router, I suppose, if you had a jig set up for that. But I, like, I actually really enjoy doing them by hand. It's, you know, it's a break from all the other stuff I do, you know, using chainsaws and power tools and all the rest of it, so. Let's get into it, shall we? The tools I'm gonna to use, this is a carving ax that's made for me by Joshua Borrell. Beautiful, really well balanced, and he done it exactly the way I wanted it. He custom made it for me. Gouge, now this is just for basically doing the bottom of the bowl. Okay, now this is just another one, but it's a hand one. It's for getting a nice undercut on the lip. This one here, this is a fail or file or whatever you want to call it. Now, this one I put an impact resistant nylon handle because this takes some abuse. A large scorp, this is for rounding the inside of the barrel. Now, I've angled the handle as well to give myself more torque. Carver's mallet, now I'll make these out of impact resistant nylon as well. I just bought a big lump of nylon and I turned them into mallets. Because believe it or not, I actually broke a lignum vitae mallet as well. That was my lignum mallet. <laughs> Snapped it in half, hardest wood in the world. Let's get on with it. This one, I think it's birch. Here we go. Not sure if you can see that or not. Beautiful bit of grain in there. I'll just chop all the dead wood off the sides. Perfect. That's one. Squaring it up a bit just so it fits. Also, look at the grain on that. Pretty. Not quite. Now, there we go. Now, I'm not sure how well this is going to work. Bit not here, so we'll make the bowl here and the handle this way. Now I have a little template there. Try and make the bowl in the center of the vise. The pressure is going to go down onto the base. Now have a look at a few different uh, templates, but this is the one I'm going to use at the moment. See, just so I get the the shape sort of the way I want it. That was fairly fast, wasn't it? Not complete. What I'll do is I'll give it more of an undercut under the lip, just to give it the volume. As you can see, I'm not sure if you can see that. You can see a nice little undercut, underlip. 
going to do that a bit more. Now, I'm going to cut this one. I'm not sure if you can see it. It has a big knot right in the base there. So it's probably not going to be viable. But we'll have a look at it anyway, just for the sake of it. And look at the, the grain on that. Just keep checking it to see if it's too punky in any areas or if there's any cracks or anything like that. that I'd have to change the design and uh, try and save it if you know what I mean. What I do is I normally always use the heel of the axe for that and I have my finger down one side. And if I let go of my little finger, it gives me a little bit more lighter control so I can hit a very gentle tap. If I want to control that tap, I'll put the forefinger on the blade just very slightly. Be very careful when you're doing the side parts. This is where it transitions from one side of the grain to the other. And you can easily, if you hit it too far on one side, take a big lump off. So try and come from the point of transition, which is dead across 90 degrees. Point of transition that way, then that way, and then come down on it this way. This normally works a lot better. You don't take as much off. See how that works? Now we're looking at the basic shape, roughly chopped out. I'll get to a point and I'll see something and I'll go, hmm, that's not going to work. And it could only be a tiny little bit, but if that's leaking, or if it's going to leak, and that's, you know, just with experience you get to learn this, and you'll just see it and go, hmm, that's not going to work, not wasting any more time on it, right? When you're first doing them, you don't know what's going to work and what not, what's not going to work, so just finish them. At least it will give you ex an experience as to what will work and what won't work. This one is actually for a good friend of mine called um, Mike Pullen. He uh, has his own YouTube channel. He's actually a, pretty much a god of YouTube, if you know what I mean. He's into bushcraft and stuff like that. And uh, I made him one of these three years ago. Mike, is it? Is it three years ago? His one broke. So I'm going to make him a new one. And this is it. Yeah. They're not shovel proof, by the way. Yeah. So that's two of them done. Pretty much, I can just do them by eye, really. And do them pretty much exactly the same. Now, obviously, I'm going to do some uh, refining on it with the draw blade. I'll show you how to use a draw blade on it in a vise. And uh, then I'll be doing it with a, a knife. I'm on a different set of tools now to do the blading. Here's a very small draw blade. This is a fail one. Larger one here. Slightly larger, very, very sharp, very handy as well. These are some very, very nice Sloyd knives. Very, very sharp. Magnus something or another. Little birch bark sheaths on them.
Okay, that's this one pretty much done. I've just got to flatten off the back. I'm gonna carve around the uh, holes I just drilled. I'm gonna go over it again, make sure it's all nice and clean and everything. Make sure there's no catching points. And we'll whittle away at it for a little while. What's up next? All right. Watch out, knife, good girl. That one is done. It's got the uh, the knife finish on it. I'm gonna give it a very light rub over with some like four or 600 grit, just to polish off those sharp edges. You'll still see the knife marks and everything on it, but it will just give it a nice a nicer finish, I feel. So good raw linseed oil, and that's what we're going to coat them in. Let's give it a good soaking. It's my favourite bit. Look at that. Look at that, beautiful, isn't it? That's that one done. I'm just going to let that soak and keep giving it more coats and more coats. Just coating it, coating it, coating it and then let it cure. I normally let them cure for about three months. See all the little flickers of light with all the knife cuts. Yeah, I don't know if that's the same as your one, Mike, but uh, I think it's close enough. I'll be sending that to you, mate, as soon as it's cured. Okay? Enjoy. Okay, that's the end of this video. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me to do a, a video on carving a cooker. I uh, just haven't had the time and I've only just started doing videos as you know um, but uh, I really enjoy doing this I take time out of doing uh, bigger jobs uh, and all of that and commissions and I love just sitting here whittling and it's real really relaxing for me I, I actually really enjoy doing it I should do more of it but I really don't get the time you know uh, now this one this particular one is for as I've told you before Mike Pullen so Mike I hope you enjoy it mate and uh, don't hit this one with a shovel all right <laughs> if you like the video please hit subscribe and the little bell thing you'll see all my other videos coming up